Welcome, educators, parents, and scholar gamers to the Academy of Esports, episode 19, interview with Joey Gariziak. I'm your host, James O'Hagan. This is the podcast where I delve into topics surrounding esports and education. Esports are organized competitive video games, allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We cannot forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. In this episode, I interviewed Dr. Joey Gariziak, Director of Sports Management and also the Esports Director at Shenandoah University. We discuss his outlook on esports and the shifting collegiate landscape of esports. And with that, I present to you this interview. Welcome to the Academy of Esports podcast. My name is James O'Hagan. I'm here with Dr. Joey Gariziak from Shenandoah University. Uh, Dr. G is a uh, focused in uh, sports studies throughout his career as a, as a, as a Georgia Bulldog. So he was with uh, sports studies, the University of Georgia. He got a master's in physical education and sports studies from the University of Georgia and his PhD in sport management and policy from the University of Georgia. Fields of expertise, esports and betty, competitive video gaming. Um, he is also a uh, focused in uh, Major League Baseball and baseball history, which is something I totally love outside of that and race and sports. So, Joey, the reason why um, we have you on here today is because we wanted to focus in on what Shenandoah is doing as far as esports in in education. Um, obviously, uh, from my uh, oh, you froze for a second there. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought you had froze yep. for a second there on me. Um, we're good. So, uh, our podcast or my podcast, I should say, focuses in on esports and education. And um, we focus more on K-12, but obviously the mm -hmm. landscape in higher education is changing dramatically over the last few years. I know University uh, Ohio State University made a major announcement as far as their esports programming. Um, University of California, Irvine is a big player. Uh, Staffordshire University in the UK has become a very big player in this realm. And now Shenandoah University. So what do you see? Uh, what 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 is it about your program uh, that makes it unique, special? Why is it that you felt that you needed to make this shift? What are you hoping to attract as far as students? What are the goals? Give us <laughs> give us the whole thing. <laughs> hey, wow, that's like eighteen questions in one there. Right. That's, yeah. Where do I start? Wow. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for having me on here. This is this is great. Um, I'm I'm glad I'm able to talk to you and kind of get the word about what we're doing here and uh, at Shenandoah as far as esports goes and. You know, to go on to what makes us unique and what makes our program unique, well, I think that right now any esports academic program is going to be unique by the nature of what it is because you just don't see it in many places. You mentioned three or four places, and that's about all there is right now that, that are big players in the space as far as esports on the education side of things. So not so much on the competitive side, but more on the actual education side for students to come and learn about the space, how to work in the industry, um, look at the cultural, sociocultural aspects that are out there. Um, you know, Staffordshire University was really the first one that I saw. Um, and so when I was, when I had this idea in mind, I actually didn't have an idea of this is going to be a full-fledged major in mm -hmm. esports. I was like, all right, let's 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 test the waters. Let's dip our toe in a little bit. Let's have a class and let's see where that goes. Let's see what the reception's like as far as not just from students, but also from administration, from the industry as well as from other faculty, to be honest. So let's see what the buy-in is like for something like this. And um, yeah, I, I kind of floated the idea a little bit about one class, and my dean at the business school here at Shenandoah loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, yeah, let's not go to a major yet. Let's not go to a concentration even. Let's let's go with a class and see how it goes. Okay, I said, perfect. Um, and so I got the go-ahead to teach uh, an introduction to esports class, and we actually have it listed as a sport management class. Um, and, uh, that's what I'm actually teaching this semester for the first time, wrapping up next week with our final exam. And, um, the reception has been great. Um, you know, it's, it's been fantastic from colleagues here, from administration, from students. And, um, I've actually worked with some other schools, Ohio university. I helped them developing their esports class that they're also teaching. Um, I learned a lot from university of South Carolina and their esports class as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's really looking at 
where who has this and how can we work together to help each other out? Um, because it's a, it's it's something that's so new that there aren't any quote unquote best practices out there yet because it's such a new space we don't know what best practices are. Mm-hmm. And you know this this kind of evolves. And over the summer, the the president Tracy Fitzsimmons at, at, here at the university kind of looked at me and said, "Well, esports it's it's still a big thing, right?" And I said, "Yeah, Tracy, it's still a big thing. It's still around." Yeah. And uh, well, she said, "Well, how many majors out there are there in esports?" And as of this summer, um, Staffordshire University, like you mentioned, and that was all. Mm-hmm. Uh, Becker College in Massachusetts announced theirs uh, later in the summer. So even before that one was announced, we knew that was going on. I was like, Tracy, there are zero in the country. And she said, well, why can't we do it? And I said, there's no reason why we can't. It just needs, I need the support. She said, you have it, go. I said, okay, there's, that's not overwhelming at all, thanks. Um, and so, you know, it's we're starting to, to, to write this new major. I was really looking at what is the industry demand and how can we take the industry demands? What, are the, what does the industry need? And what do our students want? And how can we have something that combines those two things and provides a bridge for what the students want to what the industry is demanding? Um, So I spent a lot of time talking to people in the industry with, hey, what is the number one or two thing that students should have from an esports major? And most of them said, first of all, if they have a major in esports and they want to work in esports, that's going to put them ahead of 95 percent of all other applicants just because that's a degree in something that they want to concentrate in and other people that are applying for esport jobs are playing video games and that's all. Mm-hmm. So they think because they play video games, they can work in the industry and that's just not the case. And so just having a degree in of itself was something big. And the, the, uh, the other thing that came out was experience. You've got to have experience in run a uh, running events. Um, so that event management experience is something that, as you kind of mentioned with my background in sport management, I, I, a lot of our classes are focused on running sporting events it's an entertainment event, and the same thing can be said of esports. Whether or not you call it esports a sport, which, by the way, I do, mm-hmm. uh, whether you call it a sport or not, it's entertainment, and it's it it generates a lot of revenue, and it has a lot of similarities to the sport industry. And so I was pulling on my background in sports and sport management and event management, marketing, revenue generation, all those things, and I said, what what can I focus on for my esports specific classes? taking those concepts from sport management and that will help them in the industry based on what I know about the sport industry. And um, so what I came up with was a pretty robust program uh, that has two different minors as well as the major. And it's, it's kind of small in and of itself for esports specific classes. There are nine esports specific classes in the major. Okay. One of them being an experiential learning class where the, the students in the major will work with our varsity level competitive team here on campus um, and so that also makes it unique in that I really want to provide a lot of experiential knowledge to the students. So any student taking that experiential learning, if they want to get into coaching, they will be a coach for one of our eSport teams here, whether it's Overwatch, League of Legends, Rocket League, oh, okay. uh, Call of Duty, whatever it's going to be. They're going to have to do that for four different semesters during their course of study. Okay. Uh, if they want to work on the broadcast side of things, they have to go into our Twitch platform and they have to broadcast events and run programming through Twitch for us and understand how that works, create the overlays, go out and find sponsors to put on our overlays, those kind of things. So I want to make it very, very experientially based um, so that when students do come out with a degree, it's not like they just sat in a classroom and learned about, oh, this is what a MOBA is versus an FPS. Here are the major events. Mm-hmm. No, they're actually running events. They're coaching the team and they're they're doing things on Twitch um, the whole time that they're here doing this. So that way they can put things on their resume that puts them ahead of hopefully most of the people trying to get into the industry because more and more jobs are opening up and they need people to fill those jobs in the esport industry. And we're going to have very, very highly qualified people to fill those jobs by the time they get done here. So that was really the goal of this was, mm-hmm. again, I'm looking at what students want. And you know, a lot of students, they are interested in esports. They like esports. They don't understand the industry and the business side of it right now. But that's what I'm here for is to yeah. teach them that so that I can put them into the industry and learn how to work the events because they'll have that knowledge, learn how to market esport events, um, you know, learn all the governance because governance is a big issue with esports with who owns the rights to these games versus third party rights. I mean, it's it's very different than traditional sports because nobody owns baseball, basketball, football, but people do own Overwatch. League of Legends, so on and so forth. So and there's a lot of nuances that are different. And that and that's and that's a problem we've run into in some in some cases, especially with Riot, for example. We call it who owns the football. So right. when it comes to League of Legends, Riot owns the football. They're very protective of their football. They dole it out 
you know, on specific occasions or on certain sanctioned events. Whereas, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Dota 2 is it, the, the, the developers behind that are like, yeah, go ahead and just use it whenever you want. We don't <laughs> care. You want use it for however you wish. Um, right. You gave us a big chunk there to bite off. And there was a couple of things that I wanted to, to backtrack a little bit. So yeah. I imagine when you brought this idea to uh, your uh, school administration, that um, I'm sure that there was some kind of pushback, at least a little bit. I mean, there's people who don't understand what esports is. There's people who um, really kind of, um, you know, just have have no. They go video gaming and school. We just don't see the connection. How do you address those uh, those questions and concerns with people who I guess are skeptical at best? Yeah, you're exactly right. There, there's definitely been some pushback at, at really all levels, and most of it g- does come from, and you know, I'm going to use this term, it's not a negative term, ignorance. Mm-hmm. Um, it just means they don't know. Like you said, they just don't know what competitive gaming is. They think video games, all right, we're teaching people how to play video games, and video game playing is just sitting in somebody's basement eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew. Okay, t- time out, time out, time out. <laughs> I have to stop you on that. The only reason I stop you on that is because I had this conversation today with somebody and I said, it doesn't matter who I talk to, whether yeah. I talk to high school kids, middle school kids, adults, whatever. You just described a video gamer like everybody else describes a typical video gamer. So th- right. I just had to stop you on that moment because you're not the only one who hears that. I, everybody I've talked to has said the exact same thing. So, yeah, sorry. that's funny because, yeah, it's 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 right on. And a small tangent, the other side of our major is not just the business side of esports. It's actually the exercise science side and the sports mm. science side of esports, which is one of our minors. And so that also makes our program very unique on that side, but we can talk about that a little later. Um, so yeah, the there's been some pushback and I've had a lot from um, other faculty at times and it's all about just having a conversation. You know, mm. it's just, just, all right, let's get together. I wanna explain what esports is. I wanna explain what the majors are and how it fits in into the curriculum here at Shenandoah. Mm. Um, you know, that's that's been big to, to show them how it actually does fit in there. Um, and, 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 I, and I know too, probably because this is, this is not just, I'm sure your, your university, but all other universities, it's highly competitive, hyper competitive right now, especially for small colleges and universities. Right. And there are limited resources. Uh, mm-hmm. I know in our own state of Wisconsin, there was a number of, of majors that were recently cut from certain schools and they tried to consolidate mm-hmm. some of the state schools down to certain focus areas. And even, um, it was out in Ohio. Was it the University of Akron? Uh, oh yeah, cut cut a number ability. of of programs, but then basically announced the same day that they were also going into esports. So right, yeah, I can see where there's again skepticism, um, and even I guess you could say jealousy or or protection of you know your space in academia. So right, and we call it we call it territorial is mm-hmm. what we here um so so yeah so it's it's about explaining that but shenandoah it has been innovative for a long time and we like to be on the forefront and being a small private school we we don't have a lot of the red tape that other larger public institutions might have to get through mm-hmm. so it does make us much more nimble and our president is all about let's 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 stay on top of the wave let's stay ahead of the curve or whatever analogy you want to use there and so we actually are using our esports major to also coincide with our new virtual reality and design major or we're teaching people how to use virtual reality and act in the space, not so much on the technical side about how to create VR. And I'm not, I'm not talking about creating video games either. I'm talking about how to manage it and manipulate the space and work in those industries. Um, because we're not a tech school. Mm-hmm. That's not one of our strengths, you know, and we don't claim to be, but we do some other things really, really well here. And that is our management side is really good. We do a health professions is fantastic here. Our conservatory is fantastic. So we're really capitalizing on what we do well and just doing things that we do well and making it on a bigger scene, but we're not trying to be something we're not. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, it's about being innovative and using those skills together. But also what I do is I, I equate esports to the sport management major when it came up 40, 45 years ago. People then thought, oh, you're learning how to play football. No, you're not learning to play football. You're learning to manage a football game. Mm-hmm. You're learning about the marketing, the event management, the governance. You know, These are things I already talked about with esports. It's the same thing that sport management went through back in the 70s and that's still around and it's still extremely popular and it's a viable industry right now and a, and a major and it's, it's in a, a lot of different universities across the world. And so esports, I see that very, very similar in that, yeah, there are some similarities. There are some co- conceptual things that are similar between sport management, business, and then esport and esport management. But there are some things that are very unique about the esport industry that 
you don't get from learning about traditional sports and sport management. You have to be trained and learned in a, in a very different way specific to esports to understand that part of the industry. And, and so all that has kind of come full circle and the administration's like, yep, love it, do it. And, and I, and I see that as well too. I see a lot of crossover and carryover between, um, many of the things from my own major. I got my minor from Purdue university in coaching and okay. while, yes, I did take a class in football and in basketball. It wasn't just how to play, but it was how to coach and manage those teams. But also when we talk about practice and I, and I talk about this with, with other people too, you know, I can go to a batting cage and hit a baseball all afternoon. That doesn't mm -hmm. make me a baseball player. It just makes me somebody who can, who can hit a baseball as opposed to say a student who plays video games for 12 hours a day does not necessarily make them a competitive scholar gamer. It just makes them right. somebody who plays video games all day. Right. What we see here too, when you're talking about sports management is when I, when I look at my coaching minor and, and what, what I, how I would structure my, my practices while I am not the best baseball player or basketball player or football player, I still have to, I, I can still coach the sports. I still know how to arrange a practice, how to build around a growth mindset of purposeful practice. So we're saying, Hey, here's our deficiencies. Here's mm -hmm. the team we're going to go up against this week. Here's how we need to develop our practice. We need to worry about warm up. And I think you talked briefly about the, um, the physical uh, necessity of when you're a gamer, it's not just sitting in a chair and playing games. Mm -hmm. It's developing those fine twitch motor skills. It's about weightlifting. It's about yoga breathing. It's about high intensity training to train the brain in certain ways. So yeah, I see, I see what you're talking about as there's a lot of carryover, even if somebody, again, talking to people who aren't necess necessarily going into this major, but like educators at a K-12 le level who say, yeah. how can I possibly do this? If you have a background in coaching, guess what? There's a lot of things that translate perfectly into this realm as well, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. And I coached baseball and football at the high school level for a couple of years in Georgia, and I'm coaching our Overwatch team right now, or at least attempting to. I'm not great at Overwatch. I'm learning how to do that. <clears throat> but there are so many similarities in communication. Communication is so big about how to how to work as a team and communicate as a team in the middle of a game or a match. I mean, it's 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 so similar it's scary when you're looking at baseball and football i'm like that's the way i used to talk to my football players mm -hmm. about whatever play we're doing i'm talking the same way to my overwatch players i never thought that'd be something i would ever do in my life but it's a reality and it's here yeah and and here's the other interesting thing you brought up too briefly when you were talking about laying out the major and you were talking about how sports management was new 40 years ago and i know your background is baseball and Baseball in the last 20 years has undergone a huge transformation in just yep. how the how it is even managed. Uh, even if you, let's say you took the title eSports out of what you're doing, um, I can still see other applications of this major, even if you present it the same way, how to, how to run events, um, how to manage teams, and you're doing it just, it, the, the medium has changed, but I see so much carryover. I mean, you, know, you talk about a guy like uh, Theo Epstein of the Chicago Cubs, who by trade is a lawyer, you mm -hmm. know, and a data analyst. You know, when I talk about esports at the high school level, I talk about let's do more than just the game. Let's bring in kids who maybe are those ones who really are into data anal analysis, who can look at things click by click and video and video frame by video frame, and not just tell you know, other kids how to do things, but also coach the coaches on how to potentially find flaws in a system or those uh, those inefficiencies where they can take advantage of, say, uh, certain aspects of gameplay. That's that's one of the things I love, too, about a game like League of Legends is how the game changes so often. And when the game changes, the analysis starts. Oh, right. this character has now been changed and these ratings have been changed. How can we use this character in certain ways? And Riot, in some instances, I know, has overextended the abilities of some players where they actually have to scale right. back certain abilities. There's always this balance that's going on, and it's fascinating to see how the gamers can take advantage of those imbalances very quickly through this kind of data analysis. Yeah. Yeah, no, and you're right, because you can go back to Overwatch the same way. When a new character is introduced, you're like, okay, What's the new meta going to be is, you know, who are we using in this situation? What's our new comp going to be? Who's getting buffed? Who's getting nerfed? You know, it's you're exactly right. And so the analysis is you need a coach that understands the game and knows how to coach in order to be have a successful team, to be honest. And that's something we're working on here is who's going to be our new coach, because I'm not going to do it forever. I got the program off the ground. I'll keep directing it. But coaching is not going to be my thing. It's going to be teaching students in this new major 
and then also directing our varsity program. And while we're talking about the, the programming, what students have you attracted so far? How many students do you have in it? I mean, again, the, the stereotype is kids <laughs> sitting in his basement playing and male, male boy sitting in basement, yeah. playing video yes. games, drinking Red Bull, eating potato chips. What have you seen as far as the student response to this? Okay, so students are extremely excited. They're the students are more excited than the parents because we go back to <laughs> parents don't understand it yet. They're like, you're majoring in video games? What? And so I've had conversations with parents. I've had, I don't know, five or six different recruits on campus so far for the major as well as the competitive team. But also talking about the major and their parents are like, wait, you can major in esports now? Mm -hmm. And some of the parents have been, oh, that's great. I totally understand it because they, they're involved with what their kids are doing and they understand the space. Some of them not so much. And that's no fault to them. Um, it's just that I have to tell them, yeah, this is an industry. It's a business. It's a it's a going to be a billion dollar industry, according to Forbes in 2019. And so they need people to work in that industry and understand it to help it progress and for the longevity of the industry. And so the response from students has been fantastic. I've got I don't know, I've had upwards of 15 or so say that they're going to take at least a minor. And if they can fit the major without having to stay a lot more years extra at mm -hmm. school, they want to take the major. Um and then I've had a lot of students in high schools that have said, that's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to get there and start the major. Um, how many of them actually come up and, and, and register and sign up and begin next fall? I'm not sure what that number is going to be yet. Uh, but our registration is, is looking strong so far. And we just announced this uh, about five weeks ago, um, four weeks ago, geez. And um, so up, we're just now really, really hitting the ground running on different kind of advertisements to get more students to register and I'm ready to hit the ground running. I'm going to be visiting high schools all through winter break and just getting in there and t talking to students, talking to teachers and uh, telling them what we have going on here and inviting them to campus. You know, I want them to come see our esports space, teachers, parents, students, anybody that wants to come see our lab that we have, come see what students do during the course of a, of a match. Look at the coaching, look at what's going on and then think about how this fits into the industry. What are the different positions needed to make this operate at the professional level? That's what we're training people how to do here is to work in the professional level in a very practical way. So uh, students, I hope there's not too many students because I'm only one person. And I'm still going to hopefully teach some sport management classes as well as esports. Sure. And um, we're working on hiring one new esports faculty line right now. And um, that might grow to two or three in the next year or two. Um, it just depends on what the demand is like. And we really don't know until we wait and see what happens. And what are you seeing as far as, uh, let's go to your, your team side. Does, does your school mm -hmm. offer any scholarships or anything specific for video games, video game play? Is there expectation of if they get a scholarship that they can do whatever major they want? Or are they asked to participate in, are you thinking about including them in the major or the minor in some regard? Is, is there anything around that? So, no, I, students totally have choice. You know, if they want to participate on the team and be a nursing major, absolutely fine with that. I encourage them to do that. Okay. If they want to be an esports major and not play on the team, that's just fine with me. Um, and so, you know, t students have total choice what they want to do. Now, that being said, we don't currently offer scholarships for our competitive team. Um, at a Division three school um, in the NCAA, we were looking at, does it fit under athletics? Does it not? And currently, we are not under athletics. We'll wait and see what the NCAA says and what their ruling is. Um, in January, they have a big meeting. So I'm waiting to see what that, if they announce anything there and then we can react, you know, I, I we don't offer scholarships because we don't offer scholarships for any activities like this. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and, and our president was adamant about that. She's like, no, we don't offer scholarships for football or soccer. Why do we do it for esports? We offer academic scholarships. I said, Tracy, that's perfect. I just needed to know. And I know that a lot of other varsity schools do offer scholarships, but we don't do that. But I don't think we need to, we offer something that quite frankly, no other school does. I know you mentioned Ohio State and some other schools that are doing this, UC Irvine, but those schools are not um, competing in NACE at the varsity level. They do have their teams um, in some capacity. Um, and what the NCAA does, we'll see if they have a team there. But we're doing something that's that's very unique in our regards with the major, the competitive varsity team, and that they're going to be so interactive with one another that they don't have to be on the team to be a major. They don't have to be in the major to be on the team. But at some point, they're going to be interacting with each other through the course of studies and being on the team that it's, it's almost going to be like um, you're not going to be able to tell who's doing what because they're so intertwined with one another to learn and get better from one another. And I think it's going to help both programs grow. So no scholarships yet. I'm working on partnerships um, with some with some major companies right now that, uh, that I can't mention their names. Mm -hmm. But I'm working on partnerships for not only equipment, but also for scholarships where I can build into the 
the blah 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 scholarship for Overwatch at you know four thousand dollars a year for the next four years or whatever that dollar figure is. So I'm working with some companies to get some outside funding for scholarships because we don't use university money for any scholarships for activities. But Tracy said, hey, if you want to get outside money, you can use that as long as it's earmarked for that. Well, and the reason I bring that up about the the scholarships and gaming and connecting it into your program is some of the research that I've done recently has been that, you know, we would think that, um, let's talk at a division three level because that's where you're at. We Mm -hmm. would think that division three football would start going away because, you know, there's the CTE worries and all these other things. And what we've started to find is that, or what I've started to find is that, and I think the New York Times even detailed this in one of their stories, is that there's a huge difference in the number of females to males at at Mm -hmm. colleges and universities right now. I believe it was 58% to 42% female dominated. Right. And what Division three schools have figured out, especially because they don't necessarily offer scholarships, is that they can start a football team and all of a sudden they'll get 75 to 100 new male students into their schools. Um, esports seems like a way too where a lot of smaller colleges are, are expanding into it quickly. Not, not saying for this reason, but it also starts to generate a larger pool of males coming into the university that are, that are tuition paying. But it also, um, it's just, it, it's kind of fascinating to see that, it, that, that while we see the benefits of this, um, there is still that bottom line that's got to be met. And there's still that, how do we attract students? And this allows, while Ohio State is great for doing what they do, there's mm-hmm. 90,000 students on that campus. <laughs> They've got a lot of other things going on. And it's easy for that to, while they made good headlines recently, it's very easy for that to kind of be, you know, to, to die down quickly. Whereas you're a much smaller university. Now you've got a bigger stake on a campus co- attracting a student who would never consider your university even in, in the first place. So that's that's what I, where I feel you guys are a little unique in this. Yeah, yeah I think you're exactly right. I mean, we have people that, and I have a conversation today, actually, in about another about an hour and a half with a student, high school student, high school senior from New York, who has gotten in contact with me saying, hey, I, I want to come there and study esports. Can we talk about it to see what the options are and what the program is like? I said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so you're exactly right that people that would never otherwise have heard of the name Shenandoah um, or even think about coming to Winchester, Virginia. I mean, this is this it is an attractor uh, for students. And, you know, I, it's something that sure, Ohio State has a lot going for it. Um, and it does get kind of not necessarily swept under the rug, but it does blend in a little bit to everything else they have going on. I mean, I mean, look at college football right now. They're dominating headlines right now for college football, not for what they're doing in esports because they're number six in the country in the new uh, college football playoff ranking. And maybe they're ahead of Oklahoma, maybe they're not, but nothing about their esports. Mm-hmm. Out of Shenandoah, we don't have that same thing that might happen. We're doing a lot of big things here, there's no question, um, but nothing to that side that's that nationally. Um, going to make things um, dominate things like this, and so yeah, esports. You know, we're trying to make a big name for ourselves on campus, and students are starting to build in or buy into it. And I get students on a weekly basis. Hey, can I come watch you all play? Can how do I follow you on Twitch? What, how, do you have a Facebook page? Do you have an Instagram account? You know, those kind of things. And I don't know what Instagram is. I never use Instagram, um, but I've got students that run our social media. So I'm like, yeah, go talk to this student. And so we're building a big presence on campus um, by word of mouth, and you can't do that on a lot of other places. But at Shenandoah. I've seen it grows like wildfire. And I know you brought up Ohio State. I just want to put on record that uh, I'm a Purdue Boilermaker, and we <laughs> soundly defeated Ohio State this year in football. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we haven't done much in football in recent years, but I'm very proud to say we dominated them uh, on the field. Um, and, yeah, it, it you brought up the other thing, too, about the different roles that students can have in this. It, again, and as I've said in the podcast many times, if you just – if it's not cutting edge anymore for your school to have an esports team, what's cutting edge is what you do with it. Right. And a lot of schools just create the team as they think they have a club and it's cute and they get it done and you attract maybe 12 to 15 kids who are hardcore core, uh, players. When you, as you described, you said, I have a student who runs our social media. You know, that's a role that me growing up, if I had the choice, I would have taken video games over football, like in mm-hmm. a second. Like if you'd said to me, "Do you want to play video games?" Absolutely. The problem is, I'm terrible at video games. All yeah. video. I mean, I am just awful at, at, at almost all video games. But I would absolutely would I have wanted a role on a team? Sure. Put me as a data analyst or a social media manager 
or as a shoutcaster or somebody who, who can do the, like I can tear a computer down and put, put it all back together. I can optimize your system like crazy. Um, give me those roles. Do you have things like that built in, not just in your programming? I mean, let's, let, I know we're kind of muddying between the programming and the team, but it seems like they right. really are kind of symbiotic. It, are those those roles built into your, both into the major and into the, the team structures? So, so I think you use the perfect word is symbiotic um, because I, that was kind of one of, the, one of the things I really wanted from the major or the academic side was to help work with this competitive side because if I'm heading up both of these, I want them to work together to benefit both of them. And so what I've done is I've created some roles for students. So my, my student that is doing the social media for the esports team, it's actually going to count as internship credit. Um, and so he's getting internship credit for his major in media and communication mm -hmm. and running the social media side of our esports team. Um, I've also built in uh, two student employment positions that will begin next semester um, for students with very specific skills on the, on the technical side about how to fix the computers, how to work the computers, how to fix issues with the computers. Um, and they're going to be in charge of two different games each. And they're in charge of setting practice times. They're in charge of making sure that these teams are getting into tournaments when they need to be in tournaments, getting through working with TESPA or CSL, whoever they need to work with, mm -hmm. um, make sure we're, we're playing in, in competitions. And then, as I kind of mentioned with the major, if a student is going to wants to work on the media side of things, we're going to have them work on our Twitch account. We're going to have them broadcast things on Twitch. Not only that, but if we have an event, they can cast. They can cast that event. We had a Call of Duty tournament just two weeks ago that my introduction to esports class put on for that event management experience I was talking about earlier. And I had two students that said, hey, can we cast the event? Can we just talk on Twitch and, and broadcast it? I said, guys, absolutely. Yeah. Please do. And so now we have that capability where students, if that's what they want to get into, like you said, not everybody wants to play video games, that, to be around video games. Some of them want to work the event. Some of them want to market and go out and, and, go out and sell the event to, to sponsors. Some of them want to... Um, do the casting at the event. Some of them want to work on the technical side and don't want to be in front of anybody whatsoever, but they're the background people that have that technical knowledge that, quite frankly, I don't have. Mm -hmm. I'm a management guy, and I work in marketing side of things. I, I did compete in Halo when I was an undergrad at Georgia, and we got to compete in one national tournament, And uh, but that's about all there was back then was one national tournament for right. Halo. Um, and our grand prize was energy drinks. Uh, <laughs> and so for now, I wish, I, I wish I'd come through a little bit later. Um, right. But, you know, it's so I was on that side of things, but there I've built in as many opportunities for students as possible. And I have students come up to me and asking, what can I do to be involved? I'm not very good at League of Legends. I said, OK, do you understand the game? Yeah. Just come and be a part of the community. Let's start there. Come to practices. Come to the events. And I've got students hanging out in our esports lab. It's a, it's a very large room. I wish I'd done the podcast room in there. You could see it. It's a large circular room. Um, that has computers all along the outside of it. But in the middle, there's a lot of collaboration space where students will sit together, they'll study together, they'll eat together, they'll hang out and just talk about other games or professional events going on. Um, and so there's an opportunity for a community to be to build in there. And that's what we want. We want students to, to come together with other like-minded students so that you don't have to compete on the team to be a part of the team. You yeah. can fill all these other roles that makes a team an actual team. Um, and so that's a big part of what we're doing. And we're also looking for outside opportunities for them as well, whether that's hosting events here on campus or in the community mm -hmm. or working with somebody like the new Overwatch team in D.C. You know, we're, we're trying to work with with their general manager, uh, Kate Mitchell, um, to find internship opportunities or possible job opportunities for our students to come over there, but also to have them come out to our community and see what we're doing to kind of build a bridge between those two communities um, that we can benefit each other. Because we're going to have watch parties here. We're going to build a big um, fan base here on campus for the DC Overwatch team, and we're really going to promote them up, and we're hoping that they're going to say, oh, good, I like what you're doing over there. Let's let's have you come out here and see what we're doing, too, and help work some of our events. Um, we're, we're looking at it with E-League. Um, I've talked to some people at E-League down in Atlanta mm -hmm. that have said, absolutely, let's, let's get you guys a tour. Let's get your classes down here as much as you want, and we'll see if we can set up some internship opportunities as well there. Um, the East Coast is growing for eSports, and I think the opportunities are growing. Um, we have, but I've built in as many on campus as I can to eventually help them get off campus as well to work in the bigger, broader industry in the future. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've, uh, where I live, I live in Wisconsin, right between Chicago and Milwaukee. And that's, that's been one kind of the disappointing things as Overwatch expanded is Chicago is still not, I don't know how, you know, considering right. the, the turnout that there was for the League of Legends finals, uh, I think it was quarterfinals here in Chicago. 
uh, in the Chicago area. And then we've got the Milwaukee Bucks. So we're kind of like a NBA 2K area more than a, a than anything else. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I am a little jealous about your proximity to some of these teams. <laughs> well, what's been great, at least what I've found, um, at least with my experience in contacting and, and talking with the with the management and the guys from the Bucks, is this, you know, it's not like with baseball where, because we'll speak to baseball or the major sure. sports where it there feels like there's this ivory tower i guess where it's like oh you know we're just a school and we can't possibly you know work with these guys <laughs> the, the there's been i think it's more uh like a groundswell or a grassroots kind of feeling with these esports teams that as they're coming into fruition it's very easy to make connections to those teams right now it's very easy to reach out to them and say, Hey, we have this idea, we're, we're running this program or we're looking for sponsorship or we're looking for ideas. There's a lot of good opportunity out there to make those industry connections and those collegiate connections right now. Is that yeah, a feeling definitely. you're seeing as well too? Yeah, I think, I think you're exactly right. And the, the esports industry, I always equate it. I don't know why, maybe because I drink a lot of beer. I equate it to the brewery, uh, the brewing industry where mm. a lot of breweries, yeah, they're competing with each other for customers, but I found that a lot of breweries and, and brew people work together to say, hey, what did you do here? How did you get this flavor versus this? They're very collaborative because they want they want what's best for the industry. Mm -hmm. Is there some competition? Sure. There's always going to be competition because it's we're in a market economy in America. Um, but with eSports, I found it very similar that people are so willing to work together. Anybody from the biggest professional industries and people at Blizzard – to people here at Shenandoah University in Virginia. I mean, we're all willing to help out as much as we can because nobody, like I said earlier, nobody has a best practice yet because they don't exist. We're also trying to feel out the space. And like I said, there's a there's a groundswell where we're working with corporations because they want to know what other people are doing too and what students are doing. Because if you look at the market for esports, it's those male college students. Yeah. Um, it's that age demographic, if not high school even. And, and so – we're the ones that are in constant contact with them and professionals in the esports side know that we're in constant contact. And so, you know, they want to work with us and say, how can we get our name out there? How can we get our product in your school? Um, and, and what can we do to work together? It's extremely collaborative. And um, I, I found nothing but ease when trying to talk to people um, on the professional or other college, a big time college side of things. It's, I, I think it's a fantastic industry to be part of right now. It, it, it is fantastic. And at the same time, I feel it's a bit of a wild west. You know, again, as you said, there's no best practice. And I always get very worried. Uh, I'm not worried so much about, you know, these, there'll be, there'll be those people. It's like, well, I, I've been in this industry for 20 years. or I've been in it for 10 years. You're just new to this. You don't get it. But I feel like it's very important, especially with us as educators, you and I both as educators, that we are vigilant to, because there, there is a lot of opportunity to make money in this. And when there's opportunity to make money, there's also opportunity to exploit. And we don't want to see our students right. exploited. We don't want to see our programs exploited. Um, so it's important that we stay vigilant and attuned to what, what the landscape is, the shifting landscapes. As what you talked about, you know, you're, you're speaking of things from a collegiate level. I, and this, this may be something that from a, a sports management side that you can address, but I always worry about the 14, 15 year old kid because that's the prime time to to mm -hmm. to really become a, a, a high end gamer who is running their own Twitch channel, who is making a little bit of money, who has somebody come to them and say, hey, I'm going to offer you thirty five thousand dollars to drop out of school or do an, do some kind of other programming uh, to come be on my team. I it, it's it's I feel like just like how in uh, the uh, early 1900s. Uh, football had to be completely torn down and rebuilt so it wasn't literally killing people on the football field. I feel like esports, it's important for schools to get involved with it now because ultimately we're going to be the ones who, in a lot of instances, are going to help protect kids from exploitation, especially because there's parents who don't have the time or don't have the care to find out what is esports other than, oh, my kid's getting so much dollars for playing this game and they don't really think about what's really happening. Right. You know? Right. No, I, I think you're exactly right that we don't we, we do it to be very careful, um, especially with with minors out there and, and, and you know, people are 14, 15 years old. And that's another one of the things that's great about, I think, offering a major like this um, here is that it's a way that's that can attract students and people to make sure they do go to college. There is a lot of value in a college education. 
um, economic capital, social and cultural capital. It's it's more than just money. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of value in a college education and being on a college campus. And I think that there, the more opportunities that, that are out there for students to get an education in esports to learn that there's more than just playing. I mean, look at the numbers for playing professional football, professional any sport. Yeah. You know, it, the chances of playing are just minuscule. And then even longevity, the average career span is like three years. And what's and, worth, and to stop you, but but that whole track, to, you know, especially with baseball, where you have to go through the minors. Oh, gosh. And, and, and they're making, you know, they're making less than minimum wage in some cases, some of these minor league players. Or, you know, you talk about NBA, where you see these big contracts. Well, there's only two rounds, and then there's the developmental league. And guess what? In the developmental league, most guys are making thirty grand a year playing basketball. So... Yeah, no. So, you know, I think that um, offering these degrees, whether it's the major, the minor certificates, like you got these Europeans doing an online certificate, I think it's great. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this going forward. I've talked to other colleagues in, in sport management and in media studies and game studies and other fields and other schools. We're going to see more and more of these programs pop up. And I think it's going to be very beneficial to um, the high school, the middle school, high school crowd that is looking at getting into gaming in some capacity. And hopefully they're having an understanding that there's more there's a future in this more than just playing professional games and being the gamer myself mm-hmm. there's working in the industry that's a big booming industry where maybe that's my opportunity that's my niche you know i can i can still play and i can play on the college team at whatever I, wherever i want to go but also understand the the community and the industry a little more and studying it to get a job for a career well dr greziak do you have anything else you wish to share with us uh you, this is your opportunity to put your pitch out there for Shenandoah, the website, uh, any other final thoughts? Yeah, you know, I, I think that what we're doing here at Shenandoah is, I think it's unique. I think it's something that's that's groundbreaking, that not, not only are we offering the major, but we're offering a major with three different tracks, um, and that you can get it in coaching and management, uh, as well as media and communication, and that you're not only getting the management and the business side of esports, but you're also studying the exercise science side to understand performance optimization, you're understanding nutrition and the impact it has on performance, you're understanding ergogenic aids and how they impact performance and playing, you're understanding injury and rehab because there is a very real side to esports that is under addressed and that's the exercise science side of things. Absolutely. And, and I think that um, you know we're really on the forefront of, of having a major um, industry in, in that side and uh, we're, we're gonna be one of the first schools, if not the first school to offer a minor in esports sports studies but we're also requiring that side of things for the major itself. Um, so students coming here are going to get a very well-rounded education, as well as very specific to what they want to focus on. If they want to focus on coaching or the business, whatever the focus might be, if they want to take some computer science classes, study some virtual reality while they're here, there's opportunities here for them to do that that you don't have at other schools. And also very real experiential learning that you're not going to get at other schools either. And also in a tight-knit community with people that care, um, and do research and and just want the best for their students in all in all in all walks of life. Um, so really, there's a chance here for people to come here to study esports that you're not going to get anywhere else right now. And I think we're on the forefront of what's going to be big in the future. And you know, I just want people to to get an education and be able to work competently in that field and do what they want to do for a living. There's yeah. tons of people out there playing video games that want to work in that industry. That you know, if that's what they want to do. I can help you get there. You know, that's what Shenandoah is going to do is we're going to take, like I said, we're the bridge. We'll get you from where you think you want to be to where the industry says they want you to be. And we're going to get you there. And it's going to take some time and some work, but that's what makes it so much fun. And um, I I think that we're really on the verge of something great here. And, um, you know, I just want people to check us out. Um, Our website, um, www.su backslash esports, www.su.edu backslash esports, got the education part. Um, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, su.edu backslash esports. And um, you can check out all the different majors there as well as some of the classes that we, we do require. It's a four year degree. Um, we're forming more and more partnerships with other community colleges as well to get more people here that are like minded and are interested in this field. And we're really developing a big community here. And um, it's fun. It's exciting. Um, we're on the ground floor and we're just looking for people to take us to the next level. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for being on the podcast, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. This is this has been great, and I'm happy to answer any questions or do this any other time you want. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> that will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. You may follow me on Twitter at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N, and through the Academy of Esports account, T-A-O Esports. 
It is a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash TAO Esports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.